I had actually many, many wonderful teachers in my life. And um, not all of them actually had any art education or even any education. One of my many great teachers I had, my grandmother, that she had this uh, urge to create something to survive the cold nights in the southern part of Syria in the mountains. So she used to collect our clothes and whatever is not used and stitch them together to make blankets out of them. So in my childhood, I lived with these blankets that is, they are made out of recycled materials. Um, and she was the mother of my uncle, who I again, ne I never met. That is when he was a young man and he had quite a difficult life to survive. He used to look for unexploded bombs when the French left Syria. Um, they left many unexploded bombs, so he used to collect them, dismantle them, and make pots out of them. So I lived with many pots and spoons out of these bombs. And imagine as a child, what is the impact you are eating with a spoon that is once upon the time was a bomb. And it's, it was a very strong impact. So I carried this school of thought into my own work. I do a lot of work with recycled material, with found objects and to create a voice of this object that is, it lost its voice, its function. Another day lost is, as a title, it did not appear into the piece until much later. Um, the idea of this piece that I have seen an aerial image of um, the Zaatari refugee camp in Jordan. I have seen two images. One is an aerial image and I'm really interested in aerial photography. And one is a shot of the tent with children playing in the dust. And I felt very strongly about this image. It's very typical thing that is you see in, on Twitter or Facebook, that is people are, are communicating about it. And I felt what it means to be a child living among these tents. What it means to be um, in this dust, what it means to have no vision of what is tomorrow is holding you. This, this, if you like, these camps are becoming cities. They are supposed to be temporary structures. They are becoming cities. So, but the title came about because I really wanted something to do with waiting. This is what is the driving force behind it. Um, and another day lost is a song that is composed by the Rahbani uh, brothers. It reflects on the waiting of the Palestinians. And I thought that is Palestinians are waiting, Syrians are waiting, humans are waiting, for always there is something particularly is happening in terms of waiting to the return. So I thought they would be very appropriate to use the title. The recycled material is part of this. Um, so the process of making this piece um, is part of the piece itself. Going to charity shops, finding these books, rejected books, and bringing them to my studio. One of the very first action, I take the pages out of the books. So this action in itself is a very powerful action, separating these members of, of the book away from each other. It's a very powerful metaphor. Then making marks on them and then scoring them, then folding them, then sticking them, then making tents out of them, making uh, marks out of, if you like, songs, making uh, drawings on them. The choice of the material has to do with the installation itself. So I have this jungle of books that is, are uh, rejected, if you like, uh, discarded books to reflect on discarded lives. So, but they have to speak to me in their concept. So some of them about journeys, migrating birds, aerial photography, cooking, home, birds migrating, eggs, it, just name it, the material becomes part of the concept. Each of these books, the way how they are juxtaposed with other books. So 
one image next door to another world, they charge each other in a way that is I did not envisage before. The element of the installation, another day lost, this discarded materials, but equally there is another important element of it, is the discarded light. So the match, the burning of the match in itself is a very powerful metaphor. Light has this kind of element, it is, it is a day born, a light born and a light died, to symbolize this idea of waiting. And the juxtaposition again, words, images and matches, um, they started speaking to each other. Equally, there is many other medical boxes as part of the installation. Um, in each location, this particular installation, this is the 12th edition in Budapest, um, in each location, it took different shape. It, took, it has to react to the space. And this is one of the interesting things about this particular installation, that is, um, it's the first time we use the UNHCR tent as well as it's inside. So the installation is inside the tent as well as outside it. It's quite, quite a very powerful metaphor is coming through. Who is hosting what? Is it the tent, the big tent is hosting the small tents or the small tents are hosting the big tent? Is this is the whole thing against the architecture, how it's speaking to each other? Being a tent indoors is... So these, many of these metaphors I did not envisage beforehand. They appear in each location. It's not a fixed piece. It's actually a living piece. It's a living sculpture. It's a performance. So each day I am burning one match. Um, so the light is a, a metaphor of waiting. Um, the dying of the light is part of the waiting. But seeing the ash of this each match is equally is a very powerful part of the waiting. So far I feel um, this, if you like, this modest installation um, proven to touch quite lots of people from all around the world. In itself, it's becoming a migrant from one place to another place. And I would love it to be the last one because I would love the whole conflict to be out of my landscape, out of my horizon. But I know it's, it's far too naive to think in this way. The conflict is far too deep. And sadly, it's going to last for many generations to come. Artists and creative people are mirror making. They make mirrors, but not mirrors that only reflect, but mirrors that you could see through. It's called two ways mirror. Um, but this is part of the responsibility is the artist, but equally it is the participant, the spectator is another responsibility. I am absolutely certain that is, um, we are all responsible, creative or consumer. We are responsible of what's happening in the world. And I think that is the minute we stop and think about it, I think that is, uh, we take a role in, in our, um, if you like, in composing our life. And I think that is artist definitely is, um, is a big uh, player in making a composition or an order out of the disorder or a disorder out of the order. I don't know where I fall into, but being an artist is sometimes is a privilege, but sometimes is a curse because you have to take, you have to digest the world and to translate it into a form that is, um, that speaks to others.